Terrafish Aaron is now roughly three and a half years old. It began operations on New Year's Eve 1961, and perhaps it was the same malignant fate which blacked out the start of BBC Two, which uh, provided a snowstorm for that particular occasion. Before that, viewers mainly in Dublin and on the East Coast had been receiving BBC programmes from Northern Ireland and also ITV programmes both from Belfast and from across the water from Wales. And it's said that some of the more conscientious of them offered to pay a licence fee to the BBC, but that this gracious offer was apparently declined. Well, they've now got their own television licence of five pounds, and Telefish Aaron draws its income from this and from advertising revenue while remaining a state enterprise. The chairman of the authority responsible for Irish television and for Radio 2 is Eamon Andrews, a man who, of course, first made his name on the other side of the camera. Was this blend of state enterprise and commercial enterprise, of uh, license money and advertising money, a kind of compromise solution to the setting up of the station? Not a compromise uh, solution at all, I think, but a solution uh, forced on one by reason of the size of the population or uh, asking the population to pay an, uh, an outrageous license. How has it, uh, in fact, paid its way? Because the, the independent companies, particularly in England, had a pretty rough first year before they started to get on their feet. Well, Television Sharon has paid its way uh, if one just for the moment ignores the state subvention that, as a commercial enterprise, has shown a profit from the time it started. And its revenue is roughly 50% from license and 50% from advertising. Well, to turn now to the programs, how would you describe the initial policy and the, the main objective when you started out? Well, the main objective was the simple uh, physical one of getting a, a television service uh, going that was, uh, was an Irish television service. Um, some people were, as you said, receiving television from BBC and ITV, but this was a, a comparatively small uh, section of the community, geographically speaking, on the East Coast, the Northeast, and so on. So uh, we wanted to bring a, a national coverage and uh, national-style programming. How high was the proportion of local programs from the beginning? I'm not sure of the exact figure, but I think we were just about over 40% at the beginning, and since then we've gone over 50% home origination. Now, do many of these locally originated programs find a place in the top ratings, or are these taken by American films or outside programs? No, in some ways, quite surprisingly, or a lot of people thought surprisingly, uh, we find that approximately six or seven of the top ten programs uh, are now home originated programs, and almost always have been from the time we started uh, taking ratings. In, insofar as uh, people can receive BBC and ITV and television within certain areas of Ireland, do you consider then that you are in fact in competition? Well, very much so. I think there's a very definite competition. I think it's a very good thing there should be a competition. I think it would be awful if uh, we had no competition somewhere. It wouldn't, uh, we might not stay on our toes. Well, to move to something more general, would you say that within Ireland generally, that's to say Northern Ireland and the Republic, that the start of Telefish has helped to improve relationships between North and South? I'm sure it has. We've, we've had uh, many program exchanges uh, uh, with uh, the six counties and the Republic here, both supplies on either side of the other. And uh, I think the existence of television services on both sides of the border has tended to diminish the effects of a border and has created this uh, popular word nowadays of dialogue to a greater extent than might have happened otherwise. We're casting the net a bit wider. We're seeing uh, the Yates play on BBC Two tomorrow night, Deirdre. Do you envisage that we will be seeing more, that you will be exporting more programs to Britain and to overseas countries generally? Well, this, this would be the hope. This is a, is a slow process. I mean, the service is not yet actively four years old, and the fact that uh, uh, Deirdre will be seen by you and by several European countries as well, we've exported more of sport perhaps than plays for which we should perhaps be more famous than, than we are in television, but we will. It's an extending arm of the organization. Well, we've been talking about aims and objectives. Were there any negative aims, that's to say, on the evidence when you started of other broadcasting concerns, such as the BBC and ITV in England? Were there any things which you said, we must not do that, we must avoid doing that? I don't think we, we went about it um, that, that negative way because it was such a tremendous task um, some of the things that one shouldn't do on television become obvious every five minutes, no matter what the service is. But uh, I think we tended more to look at what 
can we do? How much of this can we achieve with the resources we have? And uh, I mean, when we looked at uh, BBC's new television center, we realized that there was more spent on that one building than we would have perhaps for four years of building and programming. You initiated uh, 625 line transmissions too, didn't you? Yes, this I think was, was a very important uh, decision. It was a recommendation by the authority and a decision by the government or by the minister, but the recommendation was that we should not just go, which would have seemed the easy way, 425 lines, but go 605 as well. Mm. And um, uh, you hadn't decided in Britain to do it yet. Um, and the fact that we jumped the gun, as it were, could have left us out on a limb on the edge of Europe, but it's worked out all right. Mm. Coming back to the system, under which you operate the advertising revenue and the license money. It seems to me that uh, financially, at any rate, this gives you, in a sense, the best of both worlds, but that perhaps it might give you the worst of both worlds in terms of pressures. Uh, for instance, I was reading in a, an advertising uh, magazine, a trade publication, uh, a sentence which read about television, it's our station, we advertise on it. Now, how much, in fact, does this represent an attitude of advertisers towards the service? I don't think it, it represents an attitude, and I'm not sure that you're interpreting it correctly. I have a feeling that that may have been, it's our station, we're Irish advertisers, therefore, uh, rather than just advertisers per se. But I think the, the practical um, uh, result of all this is that since we started, to my knowledge, there's been no pressure by either an advertiser or a group of advertisers to influence programming. There have been pressures about charges and so on, but not about programming. Another kind of pressure then, uh, which came to my notice on a poster which I saw on a wall, in fact, today, which read, Telefish Aaron, Aaron, query, which I suppose could be loosely translated as, is Telefish Aaron Irish? And I would imagine this comes from uh, some kind of pressure group, perhaps for language revival, the Irish language, or maybe for Irish culture generally. Is, the, is this a, uh, representative, again, of something that uh, you are conscious of? I don't think there's any uh, television service in any country in the world that's not under pressure from some group of people who are keenly interested in any particular topic. This is natural and in many ways it's a good thing that you should be under pressure and be reminded of things, but um, the Irish language is a very important and very sensitive topic in Ireland. It's a, a committed national aim to restore the Irish language and there's uh, many efforts to make us a bilingual nation. and. Um, some of these groups feel that television is not doing enough. On the other hand, there are some feel it's doing too much, but uh, a lot of them feel it should be more Irish. And of course, the authority is constantly conscious of reflecting uh, what is national, what is cultural, what is Irish. Well, could I raise a word which cropped up in a Panorama report some months ago? The word censorship. Panorama reported on censorship vis-a-vis -vis the cinema and books. Is there a censorship on Irish television? No. There's no outside censorship on Irish television. Whatever censorship, uh, and the word I don't think is, is, is mentioned in television, but since you use the word, uh, the effect of a censorship is, is an effect that's done within the organization. Uh, producers, writers, those in charge of programs um, know, or I think for the most part, know and feel what is acceptable outside, and uh, we've run into very little trouble in that direction. We have run into some, but it's only a minute part of the output. Well, a final question about yourself. Uh, you've been known for a long time in relation to specific programs in Britain and not as an administrator. And I wonder what attracted you to the particular post that you now hold and what do you think that you brought to it? Well, the simple and the first thing that attracted me to it was when I was asked um, if, if I would... Uh, become chairman of this group by uh, the Taoiseach, it was the simple fact that we didn't have television, and I'd felt for a long time we should have had our own television. Um, this we now have. Since then, the uh, interests of being involved in the administration of a television service have fascinated me, and uh, having seen it from one side to see it from the other side, I find a, an extremely intriguing and uh, sobering experience. Eamon Andrews, thank you very much.